Every human being is entitled to religious freedom. La ikraha fi din There is no compulsion in religion. وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Say the truth is from your Lord, but the right of a person to choose, to believe or not to believe, is that the right of the human being? وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَهَدَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا أَفَأَنْتَ تُكْرِهُ النَّاسَ حَتَّى يَكُونُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ If your Lord wanted, he could have forced everybody to believe, but he didn't want that. He wants us to choose willingly, to come to him by our own choice. And therefore, he forbade the Prophet ﷺ from forcing others to believe. Are you going to force the people to believe? No. Muhammad ﷺ brought these freedoms before there was United Nations, before there were nations calling for religious freedom, before centuries, thousand years before, 1,200 years before, the U.S. Constitution had the First Amendment, giving people freedom of religion. Muhammad taught the world freedom of religion, sallallahu alayhi wa Now, I say that because there are constant attempts in Europe, and especially in France, to dehumanize the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa We remember how the cartoonish newspaper Charlie Hebdo had cartoons of referring to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Obviously, he doesn't look like that, and he is not that. But they intentionally, they intentionally want to, you know, hurt the feelings of Muslims, two billion Muslims who love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than they love themselves. So last couple of weeks ago, on October 6, one teacher, he brought those cartoons and showed it to his class, to his students, to young students. And that teacher, obviously there is no real value, there is no teaching value in bringing these cartoons and showing them to teenagers under your custody. That teacher should have been put on trial for trying to intentionally hurt the feelings of students. There is no real educational value in that. His intent was clear, which provoked a young, 18-year-old Chechen who was born in Moscow and lived in France since 2008 to go after him and to behead him. A heinous crime that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not approve of. He would not allow a Muslim to do this. What that young 18-year-old did was pure reaction from himself, does not represent the Muslim Ummah, does not represent Islam, does not represent how in Islam we deal with situations like this. But it's a single act of a person. And the police immediately shot him dead. And the case is closed. But France and the president of France, Mr. Macron, he does not stop there. He wants to make a hero of the teacher. He gave him the highest award in France as a hero for the Republic. What did he do for the Republic? It is pure political manipulation of a situation that went wrong. Both the teacher and the killer. 
and I don't want to mention either name, were wrong in what they did. But for the president of France, who has millions of Muslims in France, to celebrate this teacher and to go out and condemn and say what happened was an act of Islamic terrorism. All of Islam, two billion people are guilty for what one man chose to do. Obviously, he didn't ask any of us. He didn't ask any scholar to say, yes, you should do that. That's what happened. There are emotionally disturbed people all over the world. There are people in this country, there are people in France, there are people elsewhere. They come in every shape and color and from every background and religion. We do not condemn a whole religion and a whole people for the acts of one person who was pushed to the extreme by the act of another person. We condemn the killing. This is a heinous crime that Islam refused to accept, to allow. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his own lifetime and the Sahaba were around him who loved him more than we did. And they heard with their own ears people calling Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah tells us in the Quran that he is majnoon, he is crazy. Sahir, he is a magician. Am yaquluna sahirun natarabbasu bihi rayb al manun. They call them all kinds of names. A liar. Kazab. Sahirun kazab. Why did they call him these names because what he brought, the message was overwhelming. It's bigger than all of them can match it. Nobody can come a message like this, like the Quran. They were the best in poetry and in speech, but the Quran was superior to everything they could write or bring. So they said, this must be magic. So they called him all these kinds of names, but neither did he get angry, nor retaliate against anyone, nor any of his companions did. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbid them from reacting. Allah praised him. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيذَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ If you were harsh, with hard heart, like many of the tyrants of today, that if you don't agree with them, let alone if, God forbid, if you say something against them immediately, directly, you disappear. Rasulullah never revenged for himself. Never asked anyone to revenge for him. Therefore, my message to everyone in America and Europe and anywhere in the world, do not insult our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by doing acts against his wishes, against his orders. He said, love and respect. And if the ignorant, they address you, say peace. We know there are ignorance. We know there are people like the ones who made the cartoons like Salman Rushdie, like others who like to provoke Muslims. They know we love the Prophet so much. And they know that one person, at least out of two billion, the chance is somebody is going to react. And then we say, uh-huh, we told you. And then they say, Muhammad told them that. Muhammad never said that. Muhammad forbid us from doing that. That's why we love him and celebrate him. And no matter what they say about him, they're not going to belittle him or bring him down. We will love him even more. 